Being witty and gritty is what we learned in lesson 1 of our TTT program. Your clever and smart behavior with just the right flavor of humor can actually make you a loved and admired and an ideal trainer or a facilitator. However, uh, you know what happens? Generally, there are things that don't work out the way you want them to work for you. And uh, some sessions are just not as successful as you want them to be. It could be a few tile attempts sometimes and uh, you know in no way we want our sessions to be a disaster, isn't it? It is generally said that if you have been a school time, mein bahut shaitan rahe ho, you know, you've been a prankster, you've been a backbencher, you've, uh, you've been one of those naughty kids who have made sure that class mein koi na koi har wakt tang hota rahe aapke naughtiness se. If you've been one of those, then definitely you can be a good facilitator or a trainer because you know it all you know you know what kind of mischief the students are going to play and you know how to handle it also is it right <laughs> okay so if you are one of those and you think you can manage the class just because you've done it all bingo that's very good but what about the other trainers who've never been naughty we have to make sure that uh, we are able to handle our class in the best possible manner you know, um, there are times when we feel that nothing is going right, nothing is going in our favor, when things just refuse to go the way we want them to go, when we feel that we've got from the wrong side of the bed. At that time, your gritty behavior matters a lot. So here I'm talking about the motivation level of a teacher. Come what may, whatever the situation in the class is, you have to remain gritty. You have to remain motivated and you have to make sure that your students are under control, your class is under control and everything is just going fine. The session must turn out to be a lucrative session. So let's talk about that today. Okay, now let's quickly discuss the things that a trainer has to handle in a session. The list is pretty long but let me just give you a gist of those few basics that a trainer has to handle. Uh, let's start with the training aids. Um, certain things that we use for our training to facilitate training or teaching. So training aids are what we must know how to handle. The ambience has to be appropriate. We have to make sure that the students are comfortable in the kind of setup we are giving. We should be comfortable with the kind of setup that we are using. Okay, So that's another important thing. Students, of course, <laughs> that's an important element. We have to make sure that the students uh, are well taken care of by the trainer because we would have different kinds of students so we should know how to handle them and how to take care of them. Uh, content and curriculum that has been assigned to the teacher uh, to be taught to the students so we should know how to handle the syllabus that has been given or has been assigned. So there are a lot of factors uh, when it comes to curriculum, time management and uh, you know many other things how much has to be covered up every day and you know all of that so uh, that also has to be uh, taken care of very well by the trainer or the teacher and of course a very important thing that is uh, related to curriculum is how you teach the curriculum how so your style of teaching again is something that you should know uh, very well because you will be able to handle the curriculum if you know the right way of teaching it so all of this and of course there are many other things so all of this becomes very important when it comes to the how list of uh, things that you need to handle and uh, you know what all you have to handle so this is what you need to know. To make all of this understandable from a professional level let me take you through a model which was researched and developed by Ellen Edwards in the year 1972. This model is actually applicable in aviation when it comes to the study of human factors. However, it has components that we can actually apply in any professional environment. So I've taken this model to a different level and I'm trying to use it to explain how we as trainers can apply it to our profession. So, uh, so basically ladies and gentlemen, it is called the shell model. I'm sure some of you've heard of it. If you haven't, then uh, of course I'll be explaining it. There have been modifications in it from time to time. So people have, uh, the researchers have done a lot of work to, uh, to explain it in a better manner. 
However, we will stick to the basic model, we will stick to the shell model and of course uh, we are using it with a little different perspective. But it is actually quite meaningful if we try to apply it to our professional domain as well. So uh, I'm going to start letter by letter uh, with every component of what the shell model has. You may um, take notes of it if you're interested because um, I will be explaining all the components and how they are connected to our lives. Okay, so S that you can see in the shell model stands for software, H stands for hardware, E stands for environment, L for liveware and last but not the least the most important is the L in the center which stands for again liveware. I'm just sharing the names with you the names of the components and of course I'm going to give you an explanation of what all of these are all about and how human interface actually takes place between all these components. Now this L in the center is you ladies and gentlemen you are liveware who is interacting with all the other elements that we just spoke about. You are the liveware of this model. And who else? Who else is the liveware? Your students. They are also the liveware, right? So when you are training, there's going to be a lot of human to human interaction. Remember that. So when we are talking about uh, all the components, yes, human to human interaction is what is going to be the most eminent. Now let us start with E. E stands for environment. You are going to train at a setup which could be good, which could be bad, which could be uncomfortable, could be too cold, could be too hot, uh, could not have adequate lighting etc etc. So now we are talking about your interaction with the environment. Environmental interaction can be challenging. Why? Because uh, if the environment is not comfortable, not appropriate, then of course you are going to be uncomfortable. But what about your students? They are also going to be uncomfortable. They will not concentrate on what is being said in the class. And then it becomes a challenge for you. So ultimately, the liveware in the center is going to get affected because the liveware otherwise who are attending your session are also going to be affected with the environment that you are dealing with. Okay, let's talk about software, as for software. So basically, uh, the rule book, norms, protocol, session timetable, curriculum that you follow as a trainer or a teacher, the content that you teach, all of that comprises of software. So here we are not talking about your computer software or the system, uh, computer system. Here we are talking about all of this that comprises of software because you are going to uh, of course follow the rules that are being set for you. You have to interact with the software all the time and the challenge for you is adaptability okay? because uh, adaptability to the rules can get difficult sometimes you know because rule books are most of the times questionable and for a trainer or a teacher software interaction cannot go wrong you know you have to make sure that you're following it only then your students will be able to adjust to it and follow it so wo bhi ek aapke liye challenge hai so khud bhi follow karna hai and you have to make sure that your students are following it they are of course they first have to understand what rules they have to follow what norms they have to follow what is the curriculum that they have to follow and they should be able to adjust to it so jo padha rahe ho वो सॉफ्टवेयर होता है दैट्स ऑल्सो पार्ट ऑफ सॉफ्टवेयर क्लासरूम के रूल्स भी सॉफ्टवेयर हैं डेकोरम नॉर्म्स कोड ऑफ कंडक्ट सब कुछ इसी का पार्ट है सो so, ये सारी चीज़ें जो है ना ये आपको उन्हें समझानी है और हमें ये चाहिए कि वो इस चीज़ को एक्सेप्ट करें तो आपका थोड़ा सा रोल कम चैलेंजिंग हो जाएगा अगर वो इन सब चीज़ों को एक्सेप्ट कर देंगे और आप खुद सबसे पहले एक्सेप्ट करो इन सारी चीज़ों को ओके ना वट इज़ दिस हार्डवेयर ऑल अबाउट blackboard, chalks, projector, pen drives, laptops वो सारी चीज़ें जिनको हम training aids बोलते हैं जिनको आप use करते हो training के लिए regularly you know things are getting better day by day and uh, hardware also comprises of the technology that we are using nowadays and technology is doing wonders smart classes, projection ways, सब कुछ change हो गया things are getting better and uh, let me warn you वो क्या रहा है इससे Yes, we are definitely uh, getting dominated by all of us and dominance ki wajah se hamari dependency itni bad gai hai hardware pe ke trainers are losing their innovation. So the biggest challenge with hardware interaction is the dependency that we have on it. 
and as a trainer you have to be prepared to find alternative methods when something goes wrong you should be able to quickly switch your style of teaching if the situation demands so so in a session if something conks off you should know how to switch immediately to some other method of teaching and remember both styles with the training aids or without the training aids both styles should be equally effective and that's what the biggest challenge is for you and once again reiterating the most important that is L this L stands for liveware with whom you are going to interact the most of course your liveware also includes other staff members your colleagues etc However, presently from a trainer's perspective, I would like you to stick to students who are your target audience and they form an eminent part of the Shell model for you. So ladies and gentlemen, if you want to know more about Shell, articles related to Shell, you can check out the links that I've shared in the video description. And in case you want to know more about the application of Shell in our domain, that is the training domain, you can definitely get in touch with me on my email ID and I would love to help you uh, answer all that is going on in your mind. Okay. Uh, my in-house sessions actually are based on a lot of examples in the TTD sessions that I have in the academy. Here, uh, of course, we can take Shell to the next level wherein we can actually do some activities related to it so that the trainers get a better understanding of it. However, when it comes to a video content, you have to restrict yourself. So um, I have tried to put as much as I can so that you get an understanding of this. And I look forward to make a Chalk That Talk series interesting and lucrative and a great learning experience for all of you. If you have any feedback, any queries, please get back to me and I would love to know your opinion and what else you would like to have in this series. For now, all the very best, wishing you all success. I'm sure you're going to be great trainers and you will be able to add more and more power to, um, to your chalk and you will become a better version of yourself soon. All the very best and stay tuned for the next video. Bye bye. Hey, before you go, like the video if you've liked it, share if you care, and if you want to stay in touch with me, don't forget to subscribe. All the very best, and for now, bye, fly, fly.